are listening to the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast, a podcast in sisterhood for female entrepreneurs that serves up savvy, actionable marketing advice and interviews with creative business owners who are in the trenches building their businesses as we speak. The Marketing and Yoga Pants community is for you, the girl on her couch, in her yoga pants, top knot tight, hunched over her MacBook, trying her hardest to get the word out about her business. So in the name of supporting each other while supporting ourselves, bringing community, sound marketing advice, coffee, chocolate, and wine together for you, yoga pants wearing business owner, in a world where followers mean nothing but paying customers mean the world, Join us on this week's podcast episode and in our private Facebook group where you'll meet your soul sisters and build your business in yoga pants. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Marketing in Yoga Pants podcast. I'm Britt Colo, and I'm here today with Hannah Lewis. She is the founder of Behave London, all the way from London, England. You will get that real quick when she starts talking. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining me today, Hannah. Thank you for having me. And there it is, that awesome accent. I love it. Hannah. Yeah. Hannah. <laughs> I'll hand yeah. it up and talk extra posh for the whole podcast. <laughs> oh, I love I'm not, it. I'm not really extra that posh. Oh, I love it. So Hannah and I first met in a Facebook group and I also did a little bit of, little bit of work for her, a little bit of email marketing stuff. And Hannah runs a pretty different, awesome type of business. And so I am so pumped to get to chat with her today over coffee. If you're looking, if you're watching us on YouTube, yes, we do these on YouTube as well. Um, we've both got our behave yourself, behave London mugs with us drinking our coffee this morning, uh, because she is such a doll and sent me a mug from her company. And, uh, yeah, I'm so excited just to see get some more insight into your business, your industry, your marketing strategy a little bit, and what makes it all tick. So, Hannah, you ready to jump in? I'm ready to jump in. Go all for right, it. let's do this. So, first of all, tell me about how you earn your living, because I still don't even know that I completely understand it. <laughs> so, so, tell me. That, that makes two of us. Okay, <laughs> so... Um, how do I earn my living? I use uh, behavioral science in uh, writing, uh, communication, and training. And I work with really large finance companies because I have that background, um, which is kind of a fancy way of saying I use psychology and I apply it to stuff. So, <laughs> stuff is um, it might be letters, it might be a website, it might be trying to get someone to save more, whatever it is. We look at what exists and then we apply some behavioral stuff to it um, to get it to be better. And then we test that. Mm, that's so interesting. Okay. So being that the case and you would say, what industry are you doing this for? Financial institutions? Yeah. So financial institutions, which is um, in the UK is just broadly called asset management. Mm -hmm. And what that means is it's the people who run the pension money. So the, um, the black rocks, um, you know, state streets of this world and hmm. the consultants who deal with them. So um, some of them might be the kind of banks that have banks on the high street, but most of them are the kind of banks that, that don't, that are just, you know, known for managing money. Awesome. Okay. So being that that's your jam, tell yeah. me, tell me the story of how you got here, how you came to be doing this with your life. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll give, I'll give <laughs> Big you a breath. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So um, I've always had a bit of a, an entrepreneurial gene. Um, I was the kid that, you know, um, cut down lavender from the neighbor's gardens and they're wrapped up in a bit of foil and then tried to sell it door to door at the age of nine. Um, at 16, I had a, a jewelry stall. So I left school and had a jewelry stall in the famous like London Camden market, um, which again, I made no money doing. I had to go back to school. <laughs> um, and then when I fell in love with all things behavioral science, that's about 13 years ago now. And I was running a spray tan business on the side of still working in a bank. 
So I was um, importing um, spray tan and selling it. And by doing that, I really got into the psychology of selling. Um, and then more and more, I realized I, I did not care about spray tan, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> but I really, I really loved all the psychology. So everything around the selling, everything around um, how people think, how to price, how products work, how packaging works, all of it. And um, I really, I, ran, I wound the business up and went back to work, you know, like full time, mm -hmm. because I just thought, this isn't what I want to do, but I know what I want to do now, and it's, it's something more marketing. Um, and then finally, I made the leap to do this full time. I'd just been in love with it for too long. I couldn't resist it any longer. That's amazing. Okay. So, always had that entrepreneurial spirit kind of always has been there yeah and so now you're doing do you feel like this is your life's work that you're working on right now uh yeah it's a little i think it's uh what i do now is almost a segue so um mm. i'm working with the big corporates um i've never been a very good corporate citizen um and i should probably explain that kind of a relatively recent revelation for me is that i i do have like a, a touch of adhd which mm totally makes sense across the course of my life now it explains <laughs> why you know i get bored easily um why i have trouble paying attention unless i'm really interested in things you know and i lose the thread but if i am really interested in something i'm i'm really driven and um i get a lot done mm -hmm. so um yeah it's just it's come from nowhere really and now you're just going with it you're making it happen uh, yeah, I think, um, I think if you dial back to who you are when you're a little kid, I was always, you know, apart from the kid that was still lavender from other people's gardens, um, <laughs> I was, I was always the kid that liked making things. Like I loved making things, um, and I loved puzzles and solving problems. And that's, that's pretty much what I do now for a living. You know, I make things like the research, um, uh, I make them pretty when I package them and I sell them like selling the training and that it's it's very much in line with who I am as a human being and I think actually the longer that I work for myself the more I'm back to being who I was when I was eight years old than mm. I've ever been. and it's really nice actually to kind of be that expression of yourself that's really interesting okay so all right so that's what we're doing now take me back to when you first started Behave London, mm -hmm. take me back to when you got your first client and earned your first dollar. How did you get their attention? How did you do that? Okay, uh, this is, I think this is interesting because it's a combination. So um, I didn't really know what I was going to do when I started it. I thought, you know, I thought it would be writing. Um, and the first thing, so the client came through a combination of, she was an industry figure. I'd contacted her via Twitter um, to try and connect with her because I'd missed her at a conference. Um, I'd been at a conference, an industry conference, and talking to loads of people. And I'll, I'll do this. So um, I run networking for women, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I do this. I walk up to women at conferences who are in my industry and I hand them cards saying, hello, sweetie, or what's a nice girl like you doing in, a, in an event like this <laughs> to get them along. Yeah, if you've not seen this one, this one's All right, so that's right? your business card. So this is the business card, but for the networking. So oh I just gosh. use it to talk to strangers because it's something, I'm not trying to sell them anything. Oh, okay, so, um, for, so for people that can't see our screen, she, Hannah is holding up a, a card with those cute little ways to start a conversation. Hello, sweetie, and whatever that other one said. Just yeah. so kind of very different right than the typical like here's my business card hi yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's using a behavioral principle like reciprocity right i'm giving them something i say i run these drinks every month it would be lovely for you to come along yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to sell them anything i'm not trying to segue in i'm just trying to get them into my network and my you know my my group of people mm -hmm. now so it's it's a three-pronged approach so i i contacted the client on twitter um i talked to people who knew her at the conference because i've been giving out the uh women's networking um cards that i had mm -hmm. and then um uh, it had come up in conversation with someone else um that i'd missed her at the conference so 
lady one and lady two had had a conversation about me and said, would it, it be really interesting to do a piece of research on, um, as it turned out, you know, uh, trustee behavior, which is the people that manage the pension funds. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I got invited to pitch for the business. Uh, along with you know three other kind of behavioral type businesses very savvy I like it that connecting not necessarily going about it in a very uh traditional way which I I, I think that you bring that so to the table in everything you do just um you're not necessarily doing it the traditional way or the way you're supposed to do it you're doing it the way that makes sense behaviorally obviously um yeah. to to someone's psyche which is uh, that's that's so perfect. So, okay, so that was your first client. How many years ago was that? Uh, that is um, January last year. Oh my goodness! I thought it was way longer than that. Okay, yeah. all right. All I've, right. Been, I've been running the the business. I went. I quit my job and went full time in the business in uh, the October. Uh, so that'd be October twenty. 15. 15. Okay. Um, and I landed the first client in, uh, on the 5th of January. Wonderful. Okay. And so 2016 was quite a year. Uh, 2016 was about as fast and as big a year, I think, as anyone has had in their first year of business. It was exhilarating, terrifying at the same time. Wonderful. Uh, amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Okay. So now that we're in 2017, about to the middle of it, uh, what's working for you right now to market your business and earn clients? Okay. Um, I still run the women's networking, uh, mm -hmm. once a month. And I should explain that when I started that, that was partly because, um, I knew I'd be like estranged from the industry, um, because I wouldn't be in the loop. I wouldn't be in the city anymore, which is where, you know, everyone is day in and day out. So I'd miss those social opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it was partly just to, um, it's a slightly different area of the business for me. So by running the networking, I'm, I'm getting to meet people that I wouldn't otherwise meet or I wouldn't otherwise know. So uh, the women's networking is really, really powerful. I'd recommend anyone to do it if you can think of a way to run it so that it's for the people who are potentially your clients so mm -hmm. i have an entrepreneurs group but we we do that for fun but i run a networking group that's for women in my industry but those are the people who are making the buying decisions and so i would encourage any everyone to do that really mm -hmm. well and that's interesting because right i am in my own ventures Mm. Uh, I'm working with clients, but I'm finding that there is definitely the need for connection between us female entrepreneurs, which is what you've kind of identified too, right? Uh, whether, whether you monetize it in a client relationship way or not, that connection is just so necessary, obviously, because that's, I mean, you're, you've got a, a healthy group of women, right? And you've created a network that way. And uh, man, I think that's definitely way, the way things are going. What's, what's been your experience with that? So um, it's two things actually. So the, the networking for women like industry, the entrepreneurs thing came out of um, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk being in London oh, and a whole right. load of us meeting at a meetup. So they're, they're mostly Gary Vaynerchuk fans. And because of that, they're actually mostly boys. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when I run the women's networking, they all come. When I run the boys networking, they all say they're going to come and three of them turn up. So it's very different experience. It's actually quite funny. Um, but they're all, you know, they're all very driven and they, they know what they want to do. You know, they're all about the hustle. Mm -hmm. And so they're two very different experiences. And then, of course, you know, Facebook groups online, like female networking, um, for entrepreneurs, really, really valuable to be able to ask those questions in a kind of safe environment. Mm -hmm. What well, you just want to say, you know, do I want Basecamp or Slack or, you know, my client is wonderful or driving me insane. It's really nice to have a place to say that because quite often your friends and family just aren't that interested. Uh, amen. And even if they were, uh, there's just a point where, uh, Correct me if I'm, my experience has been, I just sometimes need to talk to somebody that gets it and that, yeah. that understands that I'm not complaining when things are going bad and I'm not 
tooting my own horn when things are going well. It's, this is just business and this is how it goes. And when... If you had colleagues, you'd celebrate, right? But yeah, you can't. But you don't. You. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh, the, yes. Okay. Um, perfect. Okay. So to recap, what was working for me? Networking. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I will say that the reason, and that's also industry networking, so going to conferences, it's still very old school because um, where there's a lot of money involved in those kind of high end industries, it's very much still face to face. You know, they don't, mm -hmm. they don't buy off people that they don't know right. um, from outsiders in that sense. So you need to be seen as an insider and inside the industry. Um, but the other thing the networking gives me is it means I have the opportunity to e email those people every month. So we've gone from a list of eight people to 221 women on the list. I, I email them and say, uh, the networking's coming up in two weeks. It's, it's in one week, it's in two days, it's tonight. Sorry you missed it, it was a lot of fun, come to the next one. And so actually the value of the networking goes way beyond the actual event. It's more about being able to remind all of those people on your list that you exist mm -hmm. every month. You got it. That's it. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So that's what's working right now. Let's shift and talk about what the, the work that you do. What are you working on right now? Like what type of project is going on? Where's your focus at? Okay, um, uh, the ADHD means the focus is always everywhere, all at once, <laughs> a million ideas, let's try and, uh, and trying to rein that in and put some of them into action. Um, uh, I'm sure, so cool. just as an aside, I'm sure that so many of the listeners right now are being like, oh my gosh, me too, because it, uh, <laughs> it is just, when I feel like when you have that entrepreneurial thing going on, you just, you have a drive that just naturally lacks a little focus sometimes yeah. or more often than not a lot of times <laughs> so I'm sure a lot yeah. of people can relate to that but anyway <laughs> what you're working on right now yeah what am I working on okay so um at the high-end corporate level we're working on a piece of research to look into gender and pension saving which is do women respond to different messages than men do and I mm. think I know the answer is yes but I'm going to put a whole load of ideas in place and test them mm -hmm. um, and that's how we find out what's true and what isn't that's right. the sciencey bit um, and then I'm working on um, courses products really for entrepreneurs at the moment oh. so as well as doing the big corporate stuff I'm working on um, small business how how do you price as an entrepreneur you know how do you adjust your prices how do you position your product and the classic um take on this is always like a you know oh do you value price or you know how do you do it or do you do this and add a margin of 100 percent? and it's like well, no no that's not how you price because pricing is psychological and there are a million ways to price that have absolutely nothing to do with the, the value of um, what you're selling or you know Armani wouldn't be able to sell a t-shirt for 200 quid right it's right. just it would be impossible so um, so that's what I'm working on at the moment is trying to you know commoditize some of my knowledge and turn it into a course so that that's going to be the nudge kit um, but yeah <laughs> it's just a one-page website in Squarespace at the moment and you know a little kernel of an idea oh that's so a that's so inspiring because I'm sure that uh, the listeners, so, so many of them are right at that stage too. It's just like one tiny little kernel, like there's a little website over here and you figured out Squarespace and okay, it's out there, but it's extra exciting because I can see where just from my perspective, I want that. I want that course. I want to learn that from you because I hear it all the time on podcasts and everywhere, you know, how to price and everyone's got their kind of view on it. And there are, I mean, for real mark marketing gurus, sales gurus out there that are do that explain pricing in a way that I'm like, that doesn't make any, that just doesn't make any sense. You know, they're, they're either starting with how long it took you to do it or how much per, uh, expected value is coming out. And, and there's just so many different ways to go about it. And I, you just said it, I mean, 
you, you really can't figure out how to price your things without the psychology behind that price point. Right. Yeah. So I am, Oh, that's exciting. I, I want all of that. (laughs) (laughs) Once it's out. My, my friend runs a couple of restaurants, really great ones in London. And um, I said, oh, we're, going to, we're doing some experiments because initially we thought we might do this with restaurants. And then we realized like those people have no time to implement this, right? They're never going to do it. Right. Whereas entrepreneurs, like whenever I mention pricing, the first thing an entrepreneur says is like, whoa, 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 when is that? Uh, exactly. <laughs> I want to know when to do this. Exactly. Um, and so we said stuff, we're like, okay, so we're going to reorder your menu and we're going to do it from um, expensive to cheap and we're going to put the most expensive wines at the top and we're going to take the pound signs off, you know, the dollar signs so that it looks less like money and we're going to take the decimals off so it looks less like money because a, a number that has more, um, more syllables in it sounds more expensive. So it's all of these like little things that you say, you know, you would follow these steps and do it cumulatively and he came back and he was like but we we sold more we made more money but we had the same amount of covers you know the same amount of people sitting in the seats but but we made more money and I was like yeah uh brilliant <laughs> yeah but he's like I don't get it and it's like well you don't have to right that's the whole thing is <laughs> it's wonderful if you understand the psychology but I think for for people like us we're so time pressed Mm-hmm. I, I will spend money myself and have recently to have someone just give me the answer. I would rather spend the equivalent of two days of income to get something that saves me four days yes. because I just, I'm so, I'm at overwhelm. I just want to know how to do it. Yes. And listeners, I'm, I hope that you just took that in and for real are, <laughs> are listening to this because, and it doesn't even have to, it, you don't even have to be in a place of overwhelm to get to, to move into that place of, yes, I could do that, but I'm choosing not to. I'm choosing to have someone else do it because it's just simply not worth my time. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's how businesses grow. And I think from what I know about you, because you have a personal assistant or what's, who, what's Marina? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Personal I'm, assistant. Marina, yeah, she's a personal assistant. She sits yeah. with me every day. She helps me with, you know, yeah. the dog, lunch, dry cleaning. Right. And, everything. and with that, you, I would almost guarantee if you did not have Marina, you would be running Behave London, but probably not have the the capacity to take these courses, this other little thing you've got going on and stoke it, you know, it's just a little tiny fire going on right now. And if you don't have any sticks to put on the fire, it's not going to grow. If all your sticks are good, you know, so, okay. Allow Marina to build the behave London fire a little bit and your life, you know, because she's doing all, all sorts of things. So you have some energy to put into this other thing so and not everybody has that in them right not everyone wants to build uh, several things some people are just like I just want to do this and this is my thing yeah. and it's amazing um but like we said entrepreneurs and their focus I, yeah, it's, it's not it's always almost, there it's almost like actually um in terms of dedication the, the the problem with behave is that it is very much all about my knowledge and my understanding and I can't scale it It's Mm. something that I can't delegate because it's 20 years of understanding of the asset management industry and understanding behavioral science. And that's where my value is. That's where I I add a lot of value. Uh, What I can do is like stoke the fires of, you know, the nudge kit and have Marina help me with that and learn, you know, what I'm, you know, we're kind of learning together in that sense, like how are we doing this? How are we, how are we structuring the blog? How are we going mm-hmm. to do this? How are we going to drive traffic? What are we going to do about the Facebook ads? Right. And so it's almost like we're, we're building that little fire um, together. Mm-hmm. But I know that she can do all the administrative stuff, which I am truly terrible at. <laughs> you know, but we all I, have our strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. I can kind of wing it on the other side, but for her, you know, for, you know, an online business, it needs a lot of structure. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's really where she comes to play. Yes. Uh, okay. That's, that's amazing. I'm, I love that point. Okay. So 
next? That's yes. the question. What's next? Uh, what are you looking forward to? Any new projects, new opportunities, goals? What's, what's going on? Oh, I want it all, always. Um, <laughs> Don't we all? I just, <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, learning how to put a product together is something in itself. When we started it last year, I, I, I made the mistake of, of perfection. I, I really got into perfection paralysis where I just needed it to be absolutely finished, absolutely perfect um, before we launched it. And as a consequence, it never got launched and it never got finished. Um, mm -hmm. But because of that, that's why I'm excited now is actually having a little time to put it on the shelf when it was a thing for restaurateurs. Um, gave me time to think about it and mull it over in my mind and let it grow more organically. And now it's like it'll be a small course on pricing and then a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to get involved in that project and making it um, because I think I, it's where my heart and soul is. Mm. You know, the corporate stuff, it's good. It, you know, it's, it's great for profile. I, it gives... Um, it gives kudos to the rest of the business as well. You know, if you're doing something for small businesses, but you can prove that you work with big ones, it's, that's great. Definitely. Um, but it's more fun. I mean, as much mm -hmm. as, you know, the mug we're holding says behave yourself or the cards say, hello, sweetie. The ability to put humor into stuff for me is where the real payoff is. Um, that's what makes me happy. You know, it makes me smile when I do stuff that I can be just a little bit cheeky with it. And that's pretty evident being that you're working with uh, people that do pensions all the time and numbers and, and not the most creative, super analytical people. And you're yeah. branding yourself with um, mugs that say behave yourself. And you've got all these cute little cheeky and your branding itself is bright and not you know the typical bland blues and greens and you know of yeah. like like what we're, we're used yeah. to for like banks and pensions and all that so uh, yeah that definitely speaks not only to behave london but you as hannah that's that's amazing and when you can infuse that personality oh man it feels good and that's why we do this right yeah like that's why we quit our jobs and go do this other thing because yeah it's more, it's, it's more internal. It's more us. Yeah. And, and that's great. That's inspiring to hear that, you know, you're kind of thinking how to, how to infuse more of that into life. And that's exciting. Well, having worked in marketing for years, it's uh, particularly within banks and how restricted it is, you know, to mm, do anything sure. is just totally frowned upon. It's, yeah. It's really like, <gasps> no, you can't do something fun. That's not serious. It needs to be very serious. You know? Um, and so I think the real breakout for me was when I ran a training course in February, which um, you were involved in, like the background uh, speed panic, which was involved yes. in putting that together. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to do this massive thing, but I'm going to do it in six weeks. You know, nothing yes. like a deadline for creating a bit of fear and progress. Yeah, wait a um, second. So you, let's just talk about, hang on a second, because <laughs> that was a massive undertaking and you totally rocked it. So you had you wanted to do a live event right there in England, in London, and you had, how many seats did you fill? How many seats uh, were there? There were, there were 30, 30 trustees and 15 of the clients. So the person who paid for the training course. Right. Okay. So 45 and, people. Yes. And you had to get the venue and you had to make sure that the entire day was something that people would want to be there for. Uh, yeah. You did a cocktail thing at the end and you also spoke and you create, right. You did a whole yeah. training within it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, I, 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 and you, I did the logistics. I trained for two hours. Um, I did all of the presentations. We re branded while we were doing that because oh that's right I, mean, I didn't like the brand halfway through just rebranded <laughs> we had all new sides a complete whole new look and feel we ordered like the mugs that you have now um on mass like and bags and they, they it was such short time scales they were being delivered to the venue and so we're <laughs> making up the gift bags at the venue oh, um goodness. 
and then we were inviting like the biggest pensions in the land basically so um this this translates into dollars because the exchange rate is truly uh terrible at the moment so that would and so the 30 people that were in the room represented 350 billion uh us dollars in terms of pension assets wow that's amazing so that's why the client paid to host the event well right you, so again this i mean in terms of business models we're talking about you get the high quality attendees and then you sell the fact that you have the high quality attendees to the person who you know wants to talk to them right and it's, that, that's it's like very simple but it's it's a classic finance business model right and it's it's kind of like a, a a big scale affiliate marketing sort of thing right like when as um you know some of our listeners i'm sure are probably you know solopreneurs starting you know building maybe a community a following and eventually that following is going to love them so much that there will be bigger people out there that want to say hey i will pay you to be in front of your little group of people right and uh, little small whatever it's it's essentially yeah. affiliate marketing but it's at, at, at an incredible scale and i just want to give you kudos for putting that live event together and you, are you doing more this year yes yeah, we're doing more so we've just um we're doing another two in september um because there are two types of trustee and mm -hmm. um i now have a freelance sales guy who's who's selling those for me because awesome. you know i i learned for my mistake which was trying to do everything yeah um, I'll probably have a third speaker this time as well so and we know what the content is so it's about standing up and presenting it and enjoying the day as opposed to you know and then Marina will run the logistics this time right. whereas I was being a control freak and ran everything last time whereas mm -hmm. we've been through it now so now I can hand it over and that's the value I think of just you know not pure outsourcing but just saying, okay, these, I don't particularly want to sell it. I'm quite good at selling. I think I do a good job, but I actually do have to run a business and I've got other things to do. So if he sells it, we'll run it. If he doesn't sell it, we won't run it, you know? Right. And then it's off my plate. I don't have to work on it. I don't right. have to worry about it. I love it. And it's, it's sort of, that's that idea of, of uh, working in your business versus on your business. Right. And, yeah. and drawing the line in the sand. I, and it's such a, it's such a um, uh, current thing. It's, it's inspiring to listen to you talk about this. Cause you just did this. I've got a lot of background noise going on right now. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, you, it's inspiring because you just, you just did this in February and you're, yeah, I made the decision in early December. I sold it on the 23rd of december so two days before christmas and i delivered it on the 8th of february so it was, yeah. it was pretty intense six weeks right uh, oh the, yeah uh, february 2017 right now we're sitting at um may june listening to it sometime probably in june and it, it was just a few months ago that you were going through all this and and doing it and now you know it's it's just so cool to listen to people that are in the trenches doing it uh, learning through it and just rocking it as you as you are. It's just it's awesome. All right, so let's. All right, so that's what's next. Moving into some easy, quick questions. Ready? Okay. Some rapid fire stuff. I can't wait to hear your your answers to these. Uh, so. <laughs> So it may not be as quick as you think. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you're you're good. Um, so, what is your absolute favorite business tool you're using right now? Oh, favorite business tool. Oh, oh, free agent. It's a uh, it's online accounting. It's oh, I've so never good. Heard of it. It's so good. I should have. <laughs> they they did a, like a launch a couple of months ago. And if I'd had the money, I would have invested because they're going to be huge. Um, oh, wow. You just put everything in. It does your invoices for you. It calculates your tax. I think there's, I think there's an American version. Yeah, I think I've got the UK version. Of it. So it's just fabulous. Um, and you can <laughs> upload your receipts to it and everything. And then it's just all in one big place. I love it. Love it. Okay. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm an extroverted introvert. <laughs> so, 
I love I love people. I get a lot of energy from it. I really, you know, I'm super chatty. I'm out in the world. Um, equally, after I've done that, I can go home on a Friday, shut the door and not come out of the house for three days and just talk to the dog. Um, so I do, I, I definitely perform, but I, I really need refuel time and just nobody to talk to at all, like a, like a little hermit. I am exactly the same. I completely understand. Uh, early bird or night owl? Oh, I'm, I'm a natural born night owl. If I'm up past midnight, I'd happily be awake till 4 a.m. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, the dog is an early bird. He's the rescue dog I've had him for a year and a half. So uh, he who poops wins. Um, so <laughs> we, we got up at 6 a.m. this morning. And I'm oh, often at my desk working by 8 because Chewy says so. Oh. Um, so Chewy is the boss of me. Um, he's made me much more productive and I don't get to stay up and watch late night television anymore. But um, I think it's probably good for the business. <laughs> I love it. Good old Chewy. Gotta, gotta have that. Yeah, I'm gonna get a t-shirt. He who poops wins. That's it. That's perfect. I love that. It's <laughs> great. My, my cat would agree. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, I can't wait to hear this from you because you're from London. Uh, mm -hmm. Coffee or tea? Oh, coffee. Okay. Coffee, <laughs> coffee, 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 coffee. I, I blame it on working in American banks for a long time. Um, no, I, I didn't drink tea until I was in my 20s. I just, I thought it was disgusting. There's a, have you ever seen Charlie Brown, right? There's a Peanuts cartoon um, where <laughs> she, she makes him a cup of hot chocolate and he said, it tastes like um, someone just put a brown crayon in warm water. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Maybe I should put another crayon in. And that's exactly what, how I think about tea. It's just like, ugh, I've, I've, come to, I've come to like it, but there's no love there. Okay, the, me too. So I, I feel a little bit better about the fact that I have to choke down tea. I drink it because peop, there's so many good benefits of it, like d depending on what type of tea you're Peppermint drinking. Tea. But yes. it's just, but I just don't like it. I just want my cup of coffee. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard some terrible news recently. It's 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 really tragic. Which is, um, I had a gene test done, like the twenty three of me, where you send off because I was just really interested, and I yeah. got it back. And you know, it's great. You know, seeing what your heritage is, which is you know everything in my case because yeah. I'm from London. Um, <laughs> but the, the sad thing was that it says I'm a fast metabolizer. Oh, no, a slow metabolizer of coffee which means that I'm not allowed to drink a lot of it or I get a heart attack, which is, that's really bad because I've cut down, but yeah, mm, you know. That's interesting. versus living a long time. It's just, it's not really a contest. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's really interesting because I, I was just, I heard somewhere, who knows where, I'm sure on some kind of podcast as usual, uh, that over half the population is a slow metabolizer of caffeine coffee and so over half the population if they were to drink coffee past you know six hours before bedtime it would keep them up and then oh, yeah. and then the other i don't know 45 percent, let's say of us uh go through it quickly so they could drink a a cup of coffee three hours before bed and it won't keep them up i'm i definitely i'm for sure a fast metabolizer of coffee, caffeine, because I could drink a, a cup of coffee. Milky and it, latte before it bedtime. Just, yeah, it just wouldn't at all affect me or well, my sleep. This is a but, good experiment because it's, you know, it's like 5 p.m. in the UK and I've just had a coffee with caffeine in because I treated myself. Mm. So um, I think tonight may be a night owl night. <laughs> oh, your favorite. Now, now you like, have to figure out how to get, like, run around the house with Chewy so he gets tired and maybe, no, I know that doesn't. doesn't I've, I've tried work. so many times, uh, even if he has a walk at 3 a.m., as he did on Saturday, and I will Gosh. say I'm, I'm, t I'm way too old to be out that late drinking. <laughs> I, it, was hard, it was hard going. So he got a walk at like 3 a.m. on uh, Saturday morning after we've been out on Friday. And um, he still got me up at half past six. <laughs> Chewy, He's come a on. Cool, cool master that dog. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Where do you find your flow in your work? Like that moment, that those moments of you get into it and you put your head down and you pick it back up and five hours have gone by and it's like, wow, that was awesome. Um, I, I usually find it by procrastinating until everything is too late. Uh, I love I, the honesty. That's but, so great. <laughs> but maybe an ADHD thing. Um, yeah, I. The other thing that I do to overcome like that procrastination is I just start. So I have um, I use the Pomodoro technique. Yeah. So you know it's supposed to be like you know the little timer, but I've got it on my iPhone. It's um, tied. Um, mm -hmm. So I turn tied on and I just say 25 minutes of like wave music, headphones in and just start. And usually for me, that's, you know, it's just getting over those hurdles. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, I so love what I do now that if most of the time I'm working on stuff that really interests me, I find flow really easy. Um, mm. If I'm working on something that doesn't interest me, it's, it's hard miles, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, it's just learning when you don't have flow to just sit there and diligently kind of go through it at a slow, torturous pace, but at least you get it done yeah. eventually. Yeah. Probably once you hit the deadline. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think everybody deals with that a little differently. I've definitely heard the Pomodoro technique. That's in, that's, what's the app that you said that you used for that? Uh, Tide. Like Tide T -I -D -E, like Okay. Wave. It's just like wave sounds. You can play your music through it. Oh, nice. Either that or I listen to like really hard house music. So that <laughs> also helps. It's like classical music, waves, or like, you know, proper hard banging house music. <laughs> so either one, take your pick and we'll, we'll yeah, figure it out. Yeah, nothing with lyrics though. So that it has to right. be like that proper like um 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 Yeah. <laughs> nothing with people talking or a cello. That's, that's too no. much. No, yeah. Okay. All right. One last question. Yeah we have to end with. So I want you to look back on when you first started, not that it was that long ago, but let's take me back to when that, that moment when you're saying, okay, I have this behave London thing in my head. You're that girl on her couch, hunched over a MacBook, trying to figure this out. What would you say to her? Having not started your business yet, what would you say to her? <sighs> it's um you you can just try by dipping your toe in the water i did um i had the idea and i i i paid a little bit of money for an advert in an industry um magazine while i still had a job um and the first people to call were the biggest pension fund in the land and that that was it was such a surprise it's like a big auto enrollment uh, pension fund and it's just when that happens you have to accept that maybe you have something to offer the world but you don't know until you dip a toe in the water and it doesn't have to be finished it doesn't have to be final you know it can be a one-page website on Squarespace it can be a blog you don't have to know what you're doing I mean it's good if you know who you're selling to, but you, you mostly won't when you start. You, mo mm -hmm. you might not even know what you're going to sell. I certainly mm -hmm. didn't. I thought I would be doing writing. I didn't think I'd be doing big pieces of research or training or, you know, creating stuff for entrepreneurs. None of it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a journey, right? And you just, you know, give it a whirl. You might like it. And even if you fail, guess what? It's all good experience, right? You don't... Yes. It's all feedback. I, li I like to think of it as it's less about f failure than it is about feedback. All feedback is useful, good mm -hmm. or bad. Amen, sister. Awesome. Love that advice. Thank you so much for that. Um, before we go, can you please tell the listeners where to find you online? Ah, where to find me online? All the W's. That'd be www. <laughs> uh, behave, uh, dot London is the uh, the main gig and mm -hmm. there's a link for entrepreneurs in there um and then uh, a sad little one space squarespace website at the moment which may be more by the time you get to click on yeah. it <laughs> uh, is the nudgekit.com the nudgekit how do you spell that uh t-h-e 
the, the, and then nudge, <laughs> N-U-D-G-E, and then kit for K-I-T. Awesome. <laughs> I love yeah. you. Come, You're come, great. Come find it. It's got a picture of the kiwi on the front page at the moment. Hopefully Perfect. I'll get that in a month's time by the time you listen to this. But, you know, there are no guarantees, right? Oh, man. I love it. Okay, you heard her, girls. Go check her out. Send her some love and hop into our private Facebook group to hear even more from Hannah. She'll be in there over the next couple of days hanging out with us, ask her questions, uh, and just come hang out with us all in the Facebook group. It's going to be so much fun. And uh, we're supporting each other, connecting with each other. Uh, Yeah, we'll see you there. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Marketing in Yoga Pants podcast. Keep the conversation going by visiting marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook, where you'll get to join that private Facebook group I've been talking so much about. There, you'll get to chat with our podcast guests. Yeah, they're in there too. And all of the other brilliant creative business owners. We're connecting, we're meeting our soul sisters, and we're building our businesses all while in yoga pants. So come hang out with us. Again, visit marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook to get in. And one more thing. If you dig this podcast, would you be awesome and share it with someone? This entire Marketing in Yoga Pants movement is nothing without its community. So please share. And if you're really feeling the love right now, jump into iTunes. You're probably already there if you're listening to this right now. And leave us a rating and review. The more of those we rack up, the more the podcast will be found by ladies like you and the stronger this community becomes. This episode was edited and produced by the Podcast Engineers. They're pretty great, so go find them at podcastengineers.com. This episode was also brought to you by my online marketing agency, Jam Marketing Group, and you can find us at jammarketinggroup.co. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you back here next week on the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast. Love ya. Bye.